everyone, and welcome along to this month's synth tutorial with computer music. Once again, we're going to dive into the Yuhi Zebra CM plugin, and this month we're going to create a really cool sync oscillator sound. This is the kind of sound that's going to work really well for leads, particularly something that we want to sound very synthetic and cutting. So as per usual, we need to start by loading our favoured door. We're working in Logic here, but you can use any door you like. Start by loading an instance of the Yuhi Zebra CM plugin, and then start by doing the initialize. And to do this, if you remember from previous tutorials, we go to the centre of our display here, we click, and we just select UH Initialize. This gives us an initialize patch, which is ready for us to start working with. So the patch we're going to create is a sync oscillator patch, and this has various sort of vintage connotations. So in order to get that kind of vintage sound, we need to start by visiting each oscillator in turn and turning the dual aliasing off. So visit oscillator 1, the drop-down box that has dual written in it, we need to change that to a single. And then we're going to do the exact same thing over on the right-hand side in oscillator 2. We should now hear a sound that sounds like this. Now the next thing to do is to actually activate the sync oscillator function. So the first thing we do is hit the sync button, which is located in the center. You often find with synthesizers, either software or hardware, that the sync button will be somewhere located between the two oscillators. You have to have two oscillators to create a sync patch, otherwise it simply doesn't work. Once we've activated the sync mode, we need to actually turn the sync amount up, and I'm going to turn this up to a value of around about 25. You can see that every time we turn a pot, the value is displayed in the center console there, and that gives us a really clear indication of the value we're selecting. So in order to create the sound that we want, we need to utilize an envelope to create the sweeping texture. So we're going to use the envelope control, which is directly below the sync elements, and the first thing we're going to do is do a right click here and switch this to envelope 2. The primary reason for doing this is because envelope 1 is currently being used for the VCA duties or amplitude duties, how loud the signal is. Therefore, it's a really great idea to use a second or auxiliary envelope as it allows us to make different settings to the amplitude settings. As this is a fairly intricate patch, we're going to start by turning this envelope amount all the way up to its maximum. So we click in the center and we increase it to its maximum point, which will read 36 on the central display we should now get a sound that sounds like this. And we can already hear that that sweeping texture is in play there. Not quite right yet, but we're getting there. So the next thing to do is to visit the envelope section. And we're particularly interested in envelope 2. That's the lower of the two envelopes here. Envelope 1 being the envelope which is controlling the volume of the sound. So in this lower section here, we're particularly interested in the pot that's got decay written above it. The reason we're particularly interested in this pot is because this is the one that dictates the speed of the sweep. So if we make it a little bit lower, it goes faster. If we make it a little bit higher, it goes slower. And of course we can set it anywhere in between. Now it's probably too early to decide exactly where you want this pot. Essentially the speed of the sweep will probably have a lot to do with the kind of track you're writing, so don't worry too much about setting this exactly where you want it just yet. The next thing we want to do is move over to the filter section on the right hand side and we're going to make an alteration to this pot here which is labelled envelope 2. Now the problem here is that envelope 2 is being shared by the sweep so we're going to just reduce this value a little bit because the value is also introducing a little brightness at the beginning of the sound. It does however mean that the sound will be quite dull now. So we can increase the cutoff signal which will brighten the signal considerably. You might notice that when you trigger this particular sound at the moment, there's quite a lot of decay in the sound, but not very much sustain. And that has everything to do with our amplitude envelope settings. So if we've moved back to the envelope section and increase our sustain to its maximum amount, we should hear the sweep fully engaged with volume. That's a much better sound, a much better effect. So the next thing we're going to alter has everything to do with the actual potency of the sound. Because of the way that oscillator sync works, the sweeping effect is actually a variation of pitch through one of the oscillators, in this case the second oscillator. I can prove this point by reducing the volume of oscillator 1 and playing a sound, which point you can hear the sweep. And if I turn that up again and turn oscillator 2 down, 
we just get a regular sound. Now ultimately this does mean that we can blend the sound as we would like it to be, but we can also introduce a degree of potency by changing the waveform on the second oscillator. So I'm going to change this to a square wave and I do that by just subtly alterating the wave pot to a number two and now it sounds like this. You can hear there's been a slight change in the colour there. This is what it was before and this is where it is now. Ever so subtle, but nonetheless it does make it the sound altogether more potent, which is just what we want for this sort of lead context. Now we just mentioned about changing the balance of the oscillators. Again, this is something you can do to taste. So if you feel that you want a little bit more of the actual pitch of the sound, then increase oscillator 1. If you feel that you want more of the sweep, increase oscillator 2. Now the final part of this patch really is to do with the interplay between all the elements that we've been adjusting. So in particular if we move back to the central tuning section here where we've got the sync controls, the interplay between envelope 2 and the actual sync pot is pretty considerable. So what we need to do is just make some subtle tweaks. <laughs> Possibly also going back to our envelope, envelope 2 in fact in the decay. So we get it exactly the way we want it. And if we're playing something faster, the chances are we're going to want to have a relatively quick decay. If we've got something slower, we might just want that sound to play out. The choice is yours. So the last part of this jigsaw is all to do with the back end of the sound and some of the effects that we can apply. Mistakenly, a lot of people think that this sound is a very digital sound. It can be created on analog synthesizers as well as digital ones and in software. Consequently, it's a really good idea sometimes to add some back end color, in particular things like overdrive and distortion. Now the Zebra CM plugin actually has some distortion and overdrive built in. So over on the right hand side of the plugin, just in the filter section here, we've got an overdrive control. And actually the LP Excite, uh, which is the default, is quite a good choice. <laughs> However, you can hear, it does brighten the sound, so you might need to adjust the cutoff just to compensate. And then finally, depending on how you're going to use this particular patch, it's a very good idea to put some compression on the sound, which I'm doing over here in Logic. I've got a nice uh, basic compressor set up, which is just keeping this under control. And finally, I also have uh, a little Echo Boy delay line set in here, which means that every time I play a note, I get a sound a little bit like this. Which is fantastic for doing solo things. So do have fun with that patch. It's a really great sound for putting in electronic tracks, and it really cuts through a mix. Enjoy!